My name is Saliha Tijani. I'm a private pilot working towards getting my instrument rating to move onwards to my commercial pilot license. I'm an international student in Texas, USA, and this is my journey I share with you. Maybe the answers I needed to start and fly on this journey will help or provide clarity to those who may want to pursue the same or similar goals. I'd like to qualify as a commercial pilot in addition to being an emergency medical tech and a disaster preparedness and crisis coordinator who specializes in land and air response all by the age of 20. And this is my story. They say becoming a pilot can be difficult for some people, yet it remains a walk in the park for others. I'm not one to easily give up, therefore I feel I'm up for the challenge. How much of a struggle was it? I don't know yet, I'm still on my journey, but I would love to share it with you. My journey started off on doing a lot of research. The considerations were training in South Africa, Greece, the USA or the UK. The more my father read, he insisted that the best pilots train in the US or the UK. Or if you're not a fan of Brexit, you could call it Europe as a whole. Of course, training in Dubai at Emirates was the best option, but it was a lot more expensive. It had a huge and immediate outlay. I wish there was a shorter way to answer why we settled on the US, but the answer cannot be straightforward. Chances are, if you are a US citizen or an EU passport holder, before the coronavirus struck, you would have multiple choices and multiple airlines willing to sponsor you. So you may not wait to go through my arguments, but some of us were not luck lucky enough to be born into that blue passport. So we have to find solutions which are practical and financially possible. It will not all be doom and gloom for the aviation industry after the, the coronavirus. There were already a huge shortage of pilots. In my opinion, the industry will reopen and cause huge corrections, which will open jobs for the qualifying youth. Are you really up for this challenge? To understand this question, we have to know that there are a variety of different ways to become a pilot. It all depends on what country you want to fly in and where you're from. My father is an avid reader and he will tell you that the best pilots come from the US and Europe. He will tell you that even world politics plays a price on this value. Just like your secondary school syllabus, there are many protocols operating all over the world. I will talk to you about the two most common types of training you can follow. EASA training, which is the European equivalent to the FAA training, and the FAA training, which we do here in the US. I will try and break these down for you, but in my opinion, so you can make the right decision in following the program that suits you best. EASA training is known to be the most difficult. Why? It is compressed and very fast-paced. If you slip, it is easy to fall with little chance of recovery. No. The Yasa way gives very many people real nightmare. But why? And what is it? How is the program structured? The Yasa or European way of becoming a pilot teaches you everything to go from zero hours to flying a jet in about 15 to 18 months. It consists of six to eight months of theory where you don't fly and just study, although there are schools where you fly and study the theory simultaneously. The IASA theory consists of 14 different subjects divided in three modules, ranging from air law, to aerodynamics, human factors, and even meteorology. After completing all of these subjects and passing 14 tests with at least 75%, you have a frozen IASA ATPL, Airline Transport Pilot License. Frozen basically means you have to fly 1,500 hours in five years to earn your Airline Transport Pilot License or your exams will expire and you will have to do them all over again. There are also USA schools that are currently offering an EASA theory program to combine it with your FAA training. But let me not complicate the subject anymore. I will bring it up after a few weeks. Under EASA, after getting your ATPL theory completed, you start flying and getting your ratings. Private pilot certificate, instrument rating, commercial certificate, and your multi-engine rating. This is basically just the same as the FAA way. When you're done flying, you generally have about 160 to 190 flight hours. This is where, according to me, a split comes between the European way of doing things and the American way. In the European way, after this you usually follow a GOC course. This is a jet orientation course, where you make the step from turbine engines to jet engines. And last but not least, you finish off your training with an MCC course, which stands for Multi-Crew Cooperation Course. Basically learning to work in teams on jets that need two pilots. The cool thing here is that you'll probably do it in a 737 or an A320 simulator. It's not a type rating though. You'll learn the flows in the cockpit so you're prepared to make the jump to the right seat 
and it makes the transition to actually doing your type rating much easier. During this course, you'll learn the different tasks between the co-pilot and the captain. All in all, an EASA course will cost you a minimum of $105,000 if you went into a world-leading school like the CAE. It may be closer to about $150,000 and will probably be paid all in one go at the start of your training or in huge installments. But each school has a different price and terms on the course. My parents could not raise this in one go and that is why it was not an option for me. As an international student, there is no financing available and no scholarships. It really is a tough course to follow and it's not suited for everybody. My problem with this, as pointed out earlier, is that it packs too much in 18 months with very little chance of anything going wrong. There are promises that you can move to a wide-bodied aircraft upon completion, but I've tried to investigate the truth, and this usually does not happen. It is more common to start off as a second officer in a narrow body. On the other hand, the FAA way, I'd like to call this the hands-on way. The United States of America, the land of the free, the land of the brave, the land of opportunity, and also the country with the Federal Aviation Administration, aka the FAA. I started off at SkyMates. I absolutely loved my journey. The management at SkyMates, their team and instructors. You're like a small family, but any school works and many may be like that. This is just my journey, so I have to be happy with those who built my foundation. So if you're doing your flight training anywhere in the US, they will all take you the FAA way. How difficult is it to get all your ratings and how do you get from zero hours to the right seat of that jet with your FAA license? It is a long road and I will explain to you how to get there. In the FAA way, you immediately start flying and working on your private pilot license. This took me a year. You have to study and fly. I divided my days into three parts. I'd allow myself eight hours to fly and go to grand school, eight to 10 hours of sleep and breaks, and the other time I would work. After my initial license, I decided to move to Tarrant County College. This was because in addition to a commercial pilot license, I could study towards my associate's degree and also learned that I could study to become an emergency medical technician, leaving many roads open into the future and their options. So at TCC, I started working on getting my instrument rating and my commercial certificate. Multi-engine, just like the EASA, God willing, this will take me about 18 months. Now this is where it starts to get a little complicated for most people because you're done, right? Why can't I get that job at the regionals and store the skies while sipping on some high quality coffee? Why can't I immediately start flying those jets? Well, that's because you'll need a total of 1,500 flight hours, which are the FA minimum to work at a part 121 airline. When you complete all of your FAA ratings, you'll have about 250 flight hours. There's a reduction to about 1,250 or 1,000 hours if you have an associate's or bachelor's degree, like what I'm working towards from an approved college with a major in aeronautics. So, how do you build those hours? The best way is to earn your CFI ratings and build hours as a certified flight instructor. You have really mastered the subject when you can teach it. Again, God willing, this may take me about two years to reach 1,500 hours. They say some people have the money and some even do it in a year and a half. Or they get picked up at this stage by US airline. Yes, they can apply for the regionals, not for the major airlines yet. That's after flying at the regionals for about five years and reaching several thousand hours. Remember I called it the hands-on way? In all practicality, the FA wants you to learn everything hands-on and in the real world. Some pilots prefer to build hours flying cargo on a Cessna car caravan or a small multi-engine plane to make those hours or maybe even a corporate job. Charger and towing banners are options to consider. It takes a special personality to become an instructor, crazy patience to be a teacher and some thick skin to risk your life on student pilots. If this is not a road you can take, then start hanging out at the FBO and be exceedingly friendly to everybody. It might take longer, but you'll meet a lot of characters and grow your network. Let's take a look at the difficulty level of the FAA ratings and the schematics of getting to that right seat of that jet. In my opinion, the difficulty level is lower than getting that EASA training. Also the price. You can get everything you need for about $50,000, but the road to the right seat of that jet will definitely take a bit longer. There are thousands of EASA pilots out there who can't get a job right now because they have just finished school and have about 180 hours when airlines are looking for 500 hours. 
so they end up having the same job prospects as FAA pilots when they finish the course. This is part of the cyclical economics of the aviation industry. If you're an EASA pilot and watching me, please let me not dim your spirits. Please don't worry. You'll be fine. Just keep flying and keep applying. This does not mean you'll never get to be a first office or captain on a wide-bodied aircraft. There are thousands who walk this path before us, and many will follow us. It just might take a little longer. I will tell you again, the FAA way is maybe just a more hands-on approach to become a pilot on a jet, and this is my journey. We can travel on it together. Please support my content, my study, and my path by liking, sharing, and subscribing to my channel.